Welcome to Vogel Timeline, our quarterly news report keeping you up to date on the latest happenings here at the Vogel 3 and 4 site near Augusta, Georgia. Things are really taking shape here as the two new units continue to rise out of the ground. When completed, the footprint of the Vogel 1 through 4 units will cover 3,169 acres. That's an area four times the size of New York City Central Park. In fact, just the concrete used to construct the two new units for Vogel 3 and 4 would be enough to build a sidewalk all the way from Miami, Florida to Seattle, Washington. The size and scope of this project is truly hard to convey. Many major milestones took place over the summer in spite of the intense Georgia heat. On the Unit 3 side, the auxiliary building east wall placement was elevated to 100 feet to allow for the annex building construction. Speaking of the annex building, the base mat was completed in the spring and the structural steel is going up. Over in the Turbine Island, multiple pieces of equipment have been set in place. Perhaps the biggest news on the Unit 3 side was the lift of CA-01 into the nuclear island in August. Weighing in at 2.28 million pounds and standing 70 feet tall, CA-01 was the heaviest lift of the Vogel expansion project to date. Assembled on site in the modular assembly building, CA-01 was moved as one piece and lifted into place by the heavy lift derrick. The two steam generators for Unit 3, the pressurizer and other equipment will be housed in the CA-01 module. The Unit 4 nuclear island saw the placement of CA-04, the reactor vessel cavity, inside the containment vessel bottom head. The cooling tower for Unit 4 is on the way up and currently stands at more than 215 feet. Significant progress is also being made in the turbine island and assembly of CA-20 for Unit 4 is well underway over in the MAB. With so many aspects of this project happening simultaneously, you can understand why getting it right and doing so safely is our first priority here at the Vogel 3 and 4 project. We recently spoke with Doug McComb, Technical Compliance Director for Construction and Engineering, to give us some insight into how we're meeting this goal on a daily basis. The plant has to be designed in accordance with literally thousands of pages of codes, standards, NRC regulations, and at first we have to ensure that the design is in total compliance with those requirements. Once the design is complete, we have to make sure the constructor builds it exactly like the design. This is the first plant to be started in the United States in 35 years, and we want it to be right. We want it to be the model for many plants to follow us. We want it to be the first of a renaissance of nuclear power in the United States. And it's the first time this design has ever been built, so we're having to review it very carefully. We can't follow other people's footsteps. We're having to lead, uh, lead the pack and make sure that this plan is done correctly. The plant is actually designed by Westinghouse and Chicago Bridge and Iron. I, I represent Georgia Power, and we're reviewing the design. We're not doing it ourselves. We're reviewing the design to make sure that it's right. So we look at design drawings, design calculations, change notices, just everything associated with the plant, making sure the design is consistent with the licensing, the regulatory basis, and making sure the constructor is doing it exactly as the designer had intended. When we find an issue, and the issue could be a, an issue with the design or the way the plant's being constructed, the first we would do is get with the designer, get with the constructor, and make sure we understand why it was designed the way it is would evaluate their calculations, would go back to the codes and the standards. And if we determine the design is not right, if we think it has to be changed, uh, then we have to get directly with Westinghouse, with CBI, and work with them to ensure they understand the issue and convince them uh, how to make it right, how to change the design. Georgia Power is building Vogel 3 and 4 to provide safe and reliable electricity for our customers for a long period, for 60 years. For a plant to operate well for 60 years, it has to be designed right, it has to be built right. Thanks, Doug, for that detailed look at why every aspect of the Vogel 3 and 4 project is monitored to build this historic plant correctly. Part of the oversight process for building it right is the Vogel Construction Monitoring Report, or VCM which is filed by Georgia Power every six months 
with the Georgia Public Service Commission. The report is a status update on every aspect of the project. Earlier this year, VCM 12 was filed and received unanimous support from the Public Service Commission. Our most recent VCM 13 was filed in late August and covers the January through June of 2015 time period. The VCM process was created to ensure the PSC has an opportunity to review expenditures, schedule adjustments, and progress on the largest job producing project in Georgia. Here on site, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, is also monitoring the Vogel 3 and 4 project with a team of resident inspectors. The NRC has approximately 150 resident inspectors, with four monitoring the progress of the Vogel 3 and 4 project. NRC resident inspectors come from a variety of backgrounds, including the nuclear industry, branches of the military, and some are recruited directly from colleges and universities. We recently caught up with Sarah Temple, NRC Construction Resident Inspector, to find out more about the role NRC resident inspectors play in building of the first new nuclear energy facility in the U.S. in more than 30 years. NRC's goal here on site is to protect the public health and safety by independently inspecting the design, construction, and future operation of the Vogel Project. I've been with the NRC for a little over five years and I started here at Vogel last summer. As an inspector, I independently verify various attributes here at the plant. I look at everything from design calculations, design drawings, specifications, procedures. I do independent measurements in the field. I look at safety related structure systems and components out here, the important equipment for the AP1000 plant. The NRC has four resident inspectors at the Vogel 3 and 4 project. We all have engineering backgrounds in various areas including civil engineering, electrical engineering, and metallurgical engineering. Today they're pouring concrete for the Unit 4 containment vessel bottom head base mat. They are placing approximately 4,000 cubic yards of concrete over a 30 hour period. My responsibility is to oversee those activities to ensure that they are placing the concrete per the procedures and in line with the design of the building. I am very proud to represent the United States government at one of the largest construction projects in the country. Um, it's very rewarding to get to see a big project like this, you know, constructed from the ground up, from beginning to end. When I first came out here on an inspection in 2010, they were still digging holes and they hadn't even started to pour any concrete at that point. And now, as you can see, there's lots of construction going on and it's very rewarding getting to see that progress. Thanks, Sarah, for filling us in on the critical role the NRC is playing to monitor the accuracy and safety of the Vogel 3 and 4 construction process. More than 5,000 employees are working on the Vogel 3 and 4 project in all aspects of design, construction, and operations. As you might imagine, many different specialties are required to build and operate this plant safely and correctly. Our military veterans embody all of the essential skills and character values necessary for a project of this magnitude. In fact, over a third of the workforce here in the Vogel 3 and 4 site are military veterans from different branches of the service. Many are working on the operational readiness side of the project. Here with more on our military veterans and the role they're playing on this project is David Hart, Shift Support Supervisor in Training. Started off on, uh, at the Naval Academy, graduated there in 2003. Uh, from there I went to uh, start of the uh, Naval Nuclear Power Pipeline. Uh, I went to the USS Mayapple St. Paul. From, that was from 2004 to 2008. From 2008 to 2010 I was a shift engineer at a prototype and then from uh, 2010 I got out and joined uh, Vogel 3 and 4. In the Navy, they, they teach you the fundamentals first. Those fundamentals, whether it's in the Navy nuclear power pipeline or if it's in the commercial nuclear power, it doesn't change. The fundamentals are the same. So that's, that's one aspect of it. It also teaches you how to manage people. Managing people is the same regardless of where you go. Uh, you got your Navy chiefs, which are a lot of them are operating here. They have very a lot of experience uh, managing and, and uh, dealing with people. And then you've also got the decision making. Decision making, uh, while, while my decision on the boat was very different, uh, it was more concerned of safety of the ship, uh, it's still 
taking that information and being able to make a timely decision. And, and those are the three main aspects, I think, that really help prepare anybody that comes from the military to Volvo Frame Corps. I'm a ship support supervisor in training. So on a ship, you're creating power for propulsion, and the engineer officer watch it is supervising that, maintaining a safe reactor. Here, the ship supervisor is creating power for our customers, and he is also in charge, very similarly, of safe operation of the plant. Thanks, David, for that interesting look at how our military veterans are making a real difference on the Vogel 3 and 4 project. Well, that wraps it up for this edition. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you this winter to bring you more exciting stories here on the Vogel Timeline Report.